All right, boys and girls, we are live once again. It's BTB Analytics, Kevin, Steve, and Seth back with you for NFL Week 11. We got a lot of we got a lot of good matchups uh, this week. This is going to be a very exciting week in the NFL, in my opinion. Um, some pretty high stakes games. You guys know the drill: matchups, data, predictions, breakdowns. We got it all. Stick around. Let's get into it. Give a damn about a hater when I feel like it. Not today. Not today. Not today. Not tomorrow. Get out my way. Please, I'm trying to get paid. Not today. Woo woo. All right. We'll see if we also have uh, technical difficulties with this stream. Had some earlier on our on our college show. So sounds like it's a YouTube thing, but we truck on. We go on nonetheless. So, all right, boys. We got another. I think this is another... Um, Another Thursday night football game that's going to potentially be very, very good. Uh, let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into it. Washington Commanders going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. So this one, we we should we, uh, model model show some value on Eagles at this at this stage. Not quite enough for us to uh, to bet on it. Technically, if you round up to the nearest, we uh, we, we could, but <laughs> not not officially. Um, so. Seth, I guess I want to I want to kick it off to you because I think Steve and I have different opinions on this one, uh, which I don't want to bury the lead, but it's for off the numbers. We'll talk about it a little more, but tell us, you know, give, give us a little bit of the lead in here on why you think there's value on the Eagles and what the game script is for the Eagles to cover. Yeah, um, yeah, that's interesting. I probably honestly see both perspectives here. So Washington's offense is on fire this year. They're number two passing EPA, number one rushing EPA team. Philly is also in the top 10 overall, 11th passing EPA, fifth rushing EPA. And then defensively, ironically, is kind of the big difference here. Philly is sixth against the pass, seventh against the rush. Washington has struggled much more, 22 against the pass, 25th against the rush. I think the model's picking up on two major things, the difference in in um, defensive play for Philadelphia versus Washington, but then quarterback play. Um, basically, in our database, we're still using all of the Washington Commanders in-season data. We do have a 15-game rolling prior. Um, I did want to hit on that because we've been getting questions a lot and, and some conversation around that. Only our EPA has a 15 game rolling average prior. All the other in team or in uh, season statistics are only from the season, meaning success rate, echo rate, points per echo. All of that is only in this season. So the prior only comes from from the EPA per play. So, you know, it's a blend between, you know, the 15 game sample and the only in season sample. Um, But ultimately for this team, Washington, they're getting punished because they have a rookie quarterback. And basically, because they have a rookie quarterback, you know, they're going to get they're going to get punished in our database. Now, by and large, that's a better way to hand, handle things analytically. Yeah. But it's the same thing we ran into last year. You know, CJ Stroud gets, you know, punished, so to speak, in our database where we end up betting, maybe not necessarily yeah. against them, but we don't end up betting on them when these guys are on fire. Jane Daniels, I think, is in the same situation. But the thing is. Yeah. I'm glad we do that. Why? Because if we weren't doing that, we would be betting on the Caleb Williams, the Drake Mays. Like the problem is it's it's easier to say, okay, I'm not going to bet on pretty much any of the quarterbacks, uh, rookie quarterbacks, or I'm going to bet against them because four out of five of them are dog shit, but the one is really good. Well, I'm not I'm not trying to chase the one that's really good. You, you basically have to chalk that up to, well, you're going to get the other four right. So I think that's what the model's picking up here. So in this case, I think the model could be very wrong, and I don't, I don't know that the number, the true number six here. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Steve, Steve, maybe, maybe we just duke it out here uh, real quick, and then you know, save, save, a, save the off number stuff here. But I, one, one bit of one thing that I was thinking of in this matchup is somewhat of a history repeats itself, deja vu kind of kind of analysis here, and what I mean by that is. From an offensive schematic and team perspective, particularly Cliff Kingsbury and his offense, I have seen this movie before. When he was with the Arizona Cardinals, hot starts were the name of his were his, his calling card, and then an That's absolute true. nosedive tail off second half of the season on more than one occasion. And to your point, Seth, about the rookie rookie quarterback kind of high variance situation, yes, the offense has been borderline out of this world i mean we'll see when we pull up the landscape later too like they've been in some cases they're breaking the charts you know messing up the messing up the scale but 
I, I think largely there's two things coming into play here for for why 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 I like the Eagles minus three and a half for for off the numbers. But it's it's one it's it's the schematic kind of catch up. I think I think Cliff Kingsbury whatever whatever he does ultimately gets found out. Ultimately he, he is they, people start calling his bluff so to speak, and 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 he can't adjust like a lot of other good play callers can. I think regression from a team perspective, both you know offensively and then just Jaden Daniels individually from 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 his perspective as well, is due not not like to an extreme to an extreme extent, but regression is coming. Um, are you gonna gonna re go over this pick? OT? yeah, we will. Street and Paula, um, just for just for clarity's sake. But so I am more attacking this from the perspective of I think. The Eagles, number one, are kind of on their way up. They they seem to be really in control of things right now. Although, screw Nick Sirianni and his dumbass decision making for not covering a couple weeks ago. But this again, this is for me. This is for me a situation of regression and coaching regression, basically for the Commanders. So I I, I really do like the Eagles uh, at home on this one. And to boot, the Commanders only have one win against a team that has above been above five hundred this this year. They're lost. They play good teams. They don't win. Plain and simple. I rest my case, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a terrible argument, but okay. No, no. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let, let's talk about this, right? I mean, we've been talking about this for this entire season. About can you, and Eric, can we pull up the uh, the landscape for for real quick? So we've been talking all season about the Washington offense and how they've been off the charts. And again, if you're new here, further to the right you are, the more efficient you are, uh, better offensive uh, expected points at it. Close to the top you are, better you are on defense. Washington has been, if not number one, number two in that offensive spot all season long. We keep saying, oh, it's Jaden Daniels. He's playing above you know, his, his caliber. He's going to regress. He's going to regress. And listen, I'm not saying that there won't be any regression this, this year. But at some point, you have to believe this offense is what we're seeing on this field until proven otherwise. And I think that Steelers game was a, a great kind of thing. I mean, this is the game they honestly could have won and probably should have won. They got kind of reversed theirs there. But what I want to show, too, <laughs> if you go back to the landscape real quick, Washington's defense, we talked about this in, I think, week two or week three. Washington was dead last in defense. That was their Achilles heel. And look where they're at right now. Now, they're not great. I'm not saying that. But their defense has gotten better and better every week for the most part throughout this season you can see there they went from dead last to okay now there may be a bottom third they're getting close to average um we're going to see where they go they trade for marshawn Lattimore. now he won't play in this game but that's a big step up here so uh, what i'm buying is at some point like seth mentioned you, you got to look at what Jaden Daniels is doing there and yeah he's getting penalized from a model standpoint and rightfully so because we're grouping him as a rookie quarterback but this dude is playing out of his mind and consistently so yes they had a very bad step up against the ravens and they got blown out but let's not pretend that the eagles again blown out by the buccaneers right so yeah um uh washington lost to the bucks but that was week one that was Jaden daniels literal first game in the nfl so this is a team where they've had a lot of common opponents they've kind of done the same thing they've both beat up on the giants um they both um they both beat i believe it was the had they, the commanders played the browns yet no they both played the Bengals. that's the what it was they both beat the Bengals. the commanders did play the browns and beat up on them yes okay thank you yes they they, they beat the browns they beat the Bengals. so yeah i mean this is a team where they're not that far off in terms of these common wins what you kind of see from what these teams are putting out there uh and i think three and a half in the division game is too much two and a half Two and a half, you got me. I think that's a that's a that's a shaky line. Three and a half, I'm taking the points. Okay, all right. May the best man win. We'll see. It should be good. Should be a good game, no doubt. Good, gonna be good. Good Thursday night football game for sure. All right, but let's move on to the Sunday slate, boys. Why not another divisional another divisional matchup? This one should be good as well. Baltimore Ravens going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers as uh, in this one. So you mentioned it, Steve. Uh, Steelers coming off that kind of last second last second win, and then. Baltimore as well, um, you know, taking care of business last week against the um, the Bengals, right? That was last week, or was that two weeks ago? It was last a track week. of time, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this one, this one, Seth. You know, we make the number three. You know, markets at three, um, no value on either side of it. But another classic, just rough around the edges, or maybe not. You know, AFC North matchup. This Baltimore defense has been questionable. 
particularly particularly in the past game. So is that one of the angles here for you know how how Pittsburgh and Russell Wilson with his you know reinvented or re kind of founded moon ball that he likes to throw? Um, is that the game script and is that is that how they take down Baltimore here? Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> I, yeah, I mean, 100% Baltimore double, does struggle uh, with the pass defense. They're 27th in our database, but they're number two stopping the rush. I mean, they they do have some, you know, defensive prowess. It's just they struggle with the pass, and we saw what you know Joe Burrow and others have have been able to do. The the, the problem here, I think, is you know, can Pittsburgh actually take advantage of that? They are the 10th best passing uh, team and the 14th best rushing team. So. It's not like there's some world beaters there. And then the other thing is that they run the ball 9% greater than average. Um, just to kind of put some numbers on mm-hmm. this, if we can, I'm trying to pull it up. Um, we have the pass funnel, run funnel stuff that's loading here. And the you know, the thing I would say here is you can see Baltimore is just like the archetype of pass funnel, right? They're below average against the pass and they are. You want to zoom in on that a little bit? um can you not yes i can okay i mean i'm just highlighting below average yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then greater than average uh, against the rush but really what's important here is where pittsburgh is this is a team that's a little bit above average on epa per play but this dotted line represents game plan variance it's not necessarily a team that is really 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 chasing these matchups and the problem is again they throw the ball or they run the ball nine percent greater than average team so their strength or their their kind of go-to is to run the ball. Now, this is further even more confounded because we had however many games without Russell, and then, you know, we throw in a a more passing, you know, archetype quarterback. So I think that there's definitely, in my mind, an opportunity for Pittsburgh to kind of flip that switch and try to take advantage, like, since he did. I'm just not sure if that's Pittsburgh's, like, MO. Are they actually going to be able to pull it off in the same way? Now, they might try. Um, but to me, that's, that's the question here. So I don't know if we'll actually go after that angle. And if you're Pittsburgh, I'm not sure if they'll go after it as well. If I'm the head coach, I'm not sure if that's the angle I want to take because I'm not sure that we can pull it off. So I think three is right. This is a divisional matchup. Pittsburgh just knows how to win. Um, they, they know how to cover these as dogs. This is kind of what they're known for, but I think a three, you just, you just, you just hoping you're not really getting any edge one way or the other. Okay. All right, Steve. Any any, yeah. any any other takeaways for us? No, I mean I think Seth said it really well, and that that's the one thing. It'll be interesting to see can and will Pittsburgh kind of deviate from this because when you think Steelers Ravens football, you think ugly AFC North just smash mouth, right? Um, and it would be a it would be kind of a shame, honestly, kind of a shame to see Pittsburgh not try to lean on Russell to take advantage of that matchup. But I, I agree with Seth. I, I don't know or see that they do. I mean, I think you're going to get tried and true AFC North football here, which I think plays to the advantage of the Ravens. But for, for me, I mean, this is a coin flip game. I I, I think three, three is the right number here. I think that they're, they're, there's better bets to make this weekend. Yeah, sure. Can I can I point something out? I, I've been thinking about a lot about this this week. Note to self, but also note to the viewers. Please remember this. Write this in a note. Write this on a post-it. You know, make a reminder that it's going to remind you season or week one or even like a month before the NFL season starts. Please remember when we were when the media and everybody was looking and analyzing the um, the schedule for Pittsburgh, and it was like. I've never seen a schedule so hard in my life. This is like a gauntlet and this team is just going to be so screwed. And here we are week 11. And I don't know, I won't speak for you guys, but speaking for myself, it more feels like the Ravens have to play Pittsburgh, not Pittsburgh has to play the Ravens. It feels like Pittsburgh is in the pole position here to not necessarily win all these games that they're going to upcome, but they seem like they're going to be a competitive team. They seem like they got, they, they're right where they should be. They're right where you would want to be. And I think the rest of that division should be, you know, is probably shaking in their boots a little bit. So I, I say all that because, you know, it, when you're in those spots and you're forecasting forward, you get so intimidated on these narratives and these narratives become insidious because it becomes really hard to pull the trigger on value bets. Now, in this case, we didn't necessarily show value um, on Pittsburgh or Baltimore or whatever, but I just want to point out because here we are, and it does not seem clear at all to me that Pittsburgh is just all of a sudden just going to fade into the darkness. 
Okay. Well, can I can I point counterpoint real quick? Because sure. I think I I don't know if this was I don't know if that analysis of the schedule situation, which is again is kind of a moving target based on how teams you know perform or underperform as the season goes. But real quick, Falcons. Okay. Broncos. Well, better than average. Chargers. Okay. Better than average. Colts. Meh. Cowboys. Meh. Raiders. Meh. Jets. <laughs> Giants. Commanders, Matt. Okay. You're talking about the the teams they played or what? what Correct. This This is teams they've played so far. And then juxtapose that with the remaining schedule. Ravens twice still. Browns twice. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Bengals twice, but, but six, all six divisional games still, I think is more the broader point. Okay. All six plus the Chiefs plus the Eagles. Damn. That does, that does seem, that does seem a lot. I, I I'm not discounting what sure. you're saying or like writing it off necessarily, but I think, I think they've yet to really hit that, hit that mark in the, in the season where it's like that gauntlet. But since they played how many Cincinnati, how many times? Twice? They play them t- two more times. Oh, they have Cincy, not played. Is Cincy good? It's the, all of a sudden is Cincy a world beater now? I mean, to your, to your larger point, I think we agree here, which is when we look forward, we automatically say this team's going to be good, this team's going to be bad, and therefore right. this schedule is going to be super hard. But to your point, I think is what you're making, which is there's uncertainty riddled with each one of those forecasts, which then gets propagated through the forecast you're making for this one team. And so what seems like a crazy schedule, and I'm not saying this gauntlet isn't tough, but I'm right. saying if right. you go back and Google these narratives, it was like this is the hardest NFL schedule that's ever existed. Well, do, do you feel like – Pittsburgh, then do you feel like where Pittsburgh is right now, they should be the NFL number one team? Right, right. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, you that you could Google whatever publication. Warren Sharp, you know, that's that's one that we kind of tap into for different metrics for different reasons, you know, prior to the season. But yeah, by I mean, by far and away, 30 second ranked strength of schedule, aka the hardest schedule. So it's just that's just what it was. Yeah. I don't know. Which okay, you're gonna quantify those things, but it's the narrative type of like. The world is going to end. I, I just, I just been thinking a lot about this team and like, yeah. All of a sudden, no, I haven't heard that narrative once. I mean, how do you go from like the the end of the world hardest schedule to like no one's even talking about it? I just, I find that, find that uh, difficult. And I, I more so pointed out to myself because it's very difficult. I find that I end up having to just not listen to anything because it's very difficult to fight narratives, even though you're staring at a lot of this data. I, I mean. And the conversation we had internally, it was so difficult for me to bet on Minnesota because the narrative is, is it going to dog shit team? Our model loves Minnesota over. And here we are. We end up did we did end up betting it. Well, now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, no shit. This team is good. And that's what our models showed. I mean, but at the time it was like, oh man, I don't know, eight, yeah. seven and a half games. Like their current over under is 11 and a half. Yeah, which is wild. So. Okay, yeah, I, I we'll see, but this is again another one. I mean, just given the records of both teams, divisional matchup, like this is this this will be a fun this one be for sure. Game. Yeah, good for game. sure. So yeah, all right, but oh, another another fun one. This seems like they play. I don't know. It seems like they've been playing every year for the past few years, whether it's in the playoffs or good. in the regular season. Good. But they should yeah, play seventeen okay. times a year. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're obviously not Josh Allen. No, yeah, shout out. All right, well, let's talk about it. Kansas City Chiefs and the buffalo bills so we make the number three actually in favor of the Bills. so slight lean from the model's perspective to buffalo here um yeah undefeated undefeated kansas city going into going into buffalo on this one so steve yeah i guess for your money if you want to see them play every week what what in this week in particular are you looking forward to for this one uh, man yeah i mean this is gonna be a great matchup but he's gonna you know two top teams two top tier teams in a juggernaut obviously the chiefs are coming off Everyone's, you know, I, I love, I love Monday mm. morning. You see all the the Chiefs refs kissy memes and this and that. But the Chiefs just exploited uh, a known special teams uh, weakness on that left side. I think it's Alex Forsythe where they blocked that game winning field goal uh, against the Broncos. Uh, they should have covered by a nine and a half, but that's a different story. But uh, I'm looking at this real quick. Um, I'm actually kind of an eye a player prop play here. I think this is going to be a great scoring game. You think you know Kansas City's defense has been pretty good this year, but Bills may be without um, uh, Keon. Well, for sure without Keon Coleman, they may be without. Oh, for sure uh, without him. Uh, well, well, last time, last time it was trending towards that way. Was yes. I um, think that Amari is the, Cooper. The, the the news. He's out. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. 
Uh, Amari Cooper is questionable. And then Dalton Kincaid, I saw was questionable. Now, we don't have the injury reports just yet. So those are something to keep an eye out on. Yep. But if you get two out of those three, especially uh, the wide receivers, Cooper and uh, Coleman not playing, I'm looking at Matt Holland player props. Because the ball, that, that ball's got to go somewhere. Keon Coleman has been a big part of their offense. Um, and, they're in a, and a crew that's been kind of relatively, you know, unknown or no big name since, you know, the Diggs departure. Um, Keon Coleman's having a hell of a season. Someone, Josh got to throw the ball at somebody. So I think you're going to see a lot of uptick uh, potentially to Matt Collins. So I want to see what those player props are for that, especially if that news goes in. Otherwise, I'm just going to enjoy this game as a fan here. I really don't have a strong sense of way or the other. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if there's going to be a weather game. I don't know if you guys know, because yeah. just, just from a total perspective, you know, this opened at 44 and a half, which is pretty, pretty low considering these, these, these teams, in my opinion, but that is now bumped up to two points, basically to 46 and a half. So, mm. um, yeah, I guess, I guess Seth to, you know, from your, from, from your perspective or what else, what else you are seeing with this matchup? I mean, if anyone's going to, if anyone's going to knock off the chiefs and their perfect record, it's got to be Buffalo, right? It has to be. Yeah. I mean, the trick here is, um, you know, Buffalo is playing really well this year. Third overall passing EPA offense, second rushing EPA um, offense. Kansas City defensively, though, is definitely still being, you know, who they were last year, which is elite. They are 13th stopping the pass, fourth against the rush. But just like Steve highlighted here, who is – Josh going to throw to a number of injuries here. Um, we don't exactly know how, you know, we're here on Tuesday. We don't exactly know how this is going to pan out, but it looks like he's going to be down quite a lot. This is a team that is throwing the ball 2% more than average. And I do think that that is probably the thing to exploit against with Kansas city. That's where they're weaker, but again, who are they going to throw the ball to? And that's where this becomes a bit tricky. Um, but I think Josh has definitely shown, like, you know, last week uh, in that game against the Colts, I mean, he he kind of threw the team on his back. And, yeah. and I think, uh, I think I, I, I don't know, at some point you feel like variance has to happen and Buffalo is going to win a couple of these. But, I mean, I guess they won last year and it's just – they they don't they just they always win the uh the regular season matchup and not the yeah, playoff the less important the matchup yeah yeah <laughs> I don't know I I I think I I like I like Steve's analysis I think it's a good I think it's a good one there's I think they have to pass in this game so those passes have to go somewhere I just it's tough this is tough I I we I I thought about like well I'll talk about it in off the numbers but I mean yeah. this this is close I mean there were some ones. There were some expensive ones that we could have okay. gotten open, oh. but yeah, yeah. I mean, Buffalo, are. Buffalo is teetering on the on the edge of a of a top ten team in terms of pass rate over expected, and, and the Chiefs, where are the Chiefs at? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, still a top, still a top five team in terms of pass rate. So, yeah, that could that could be the angle. But again, yeah, I will be dropping whatever I'm doing. I will be making sure I'm tuning into this one. So, we'll, yeah. we'll and to be, your point about the sorry, go ahead, go. No, I was going to say, we'll, we'll be can't miss. I will be glued to the TV, baby. Yeah, I'll say to your point about the weather, uh, it's expected to be, I think, a high 50s, low 60s, sunny, no snow, uh, potential wind gust up to 20 miles per hour, but certainly nothing sustained that you'd expect would, would affect the, um, yeah. okay. the, the ability to throw the ball. As of yet. Okay, sounds good. All right, let's move on from that one. Another AFC showdown. Um this, this one's fascinating. I'm curious to get your guys' thoughts on it, but let's talk about Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Chargers, LA Chargers, baby. So we make the number one in favor of the Bengals, so slightly in from the model's perspective on it. Um, I cannot deal with another Chiefs win. Yeah, I, yeah, Captain, I hear you. But so this was set to the point earlier about, you know, are the cheat or the, excuse me, are the Bengals all of a sudden world beaters or whatever? And if there, if there ever was a team that like, kind of flies in the face of that old bill parcells like you are what your record says you are type of thing like it feels like the Bengals are that team joe burrow is playing out of his mind really and has been the past three or four weeks and this team just finds ways basically to lose games it seems like <laughs> we've seen this though year in and year out with them are are they are they going to be able to find some switch to flip mid to late season and start to win these games or or is this is this a new leaf, so to speak, with them? Is it too little, too late? Or you could use a different word, which is variance. I mean, this is like a team that like literally defies all statistics. Like 
So early in the Joe Burrow story, he is defying statistics because he's overperforming them. Like if you look at this team on paper and what historical teams have done, he's outperforming it. He's going all the way to the Super Bowl. Now sure. we look at the statistics and this is like, holy shit, this is one of the best, you know, you know, offenses in the league, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, losing every game, you know, in, in every way possible. Now, some of it is, you know, bad luck. I mean, that Chiefs game was, you know, arguably just a bad call. Um the the first Baltimore matchup, I don't even know what you want to call that. <laughs> yeah. It's just bad luck. I'm not sure. Um but yeah, I don't know. This is an interesting game because the Chargers are, you know, a classic Harbaugh team. They're just yeah. average offensively, but they're really good defensively, and they just run the ball really well. Um, they obviously put a whoop for on um, on Tennessee last week, which which we were on. This one seems a little bit harder to forecast because I'm not sure that. I mean, Tennessee was able to move the ball, especially in that first half against the Chargers, and Tennessee is, you know. Will Levis is not a good quarterback. So I'm really curious on how they're going to handle what Joe Burrow throws at them. Fourth passing offense is Cincinnati. Chargers are number two against the pass defensively and number three against the rush. Now, Cincinnati can barely run the ball. So this is going to be the Joe Burrow show. Um, yeah. So can they slow him down? I don't really know. The early market has actually agreed with our model and bought this down. I think it's now sitting at one or one and a half. Um, so I'm not, not super surprised by that, but yeah, this one's this is a weird game. It, it seems like it could be good, and I can see how Cincinnati could maybe figure out how to win this game. But you can also see a pathway for Chargers where they kind of shut Cincinnati down defensively. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty much one and a half across across all the um, the rec books. Circa Circa still at two, but yeah, to your point, like this opened at two and a half at Circa. Yes. Um, got got bought down to one and a half and is now currently at two, but still early early in the week. And and to the point about to the point about the, um, the being the Joe Burrow show and the you know kind of the hardball like clash of styles here, so to speak. One interesting little tidbit that I, I'm wondering if this will continue or trend, if you want to call it that. But for the first six weeks of the season, LA was consistently bottom seven in pass rate over expected they were leaning on the run and that was just what harbaugh wants to do he was doing it the past three weeks they have ticked up that number considerably and have been ninth seventh and sixth in pass rate over expected respectively so um i'm wondering i'm wondering if we get like a sneaky good shootout in this one the one thing that kind of i don't know to your point seth about the chargers being the the, the really good defense that they are Kind of gives me a little little pause on that angle, so to speak. But um, I would, I would, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because Cincinnati is not not particularly, um, excuse me, not particularly the world beaters. I think they're twenty fourth or twenty fifth in in um, passing defense um, on a per play basis. So would not be surprised to see Herbert being able to air it out and just Burrow being, you know, how efficient he has been this season, being able to air it out as well. So we'll see what we'll see how that materializes. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, I don't know. I this is it's it's hard for me to kind of back Cincinnati right here. And and I, I look at this, I yeah. didn't have I maybe I don't haven't watched enough Chargers games, but I didn't realize how good they were on defense, right? I mean, I, I think of the Chargers, I think of I mean, I, I don't want to age myself here, but I still think of like the LT days, right? I'm thinking careful, them, careful. you know, yeah, fucking Phillip Rivers throwing for six touchdowns <laughs> and whatnot. You know, that's it, it, the offense, West Coast offense there. But yeah, I mean, they're not not only are they really good in defense both with rushing the ball, but specifically at passing, the pass defense. And so if you look at the Cincinnati team, we're talking about Joe Burrow putting the team on his back and kind of throwing all over the field. I'm not sure if that's going to necessarily be a game plan here. I mean, they're certainly going to try, but I don't know how successful they're going to be with that. And they are piss poor at running the ball. So what happens if they shut Burrow down? And the one thing that gives me pause is you look at Cincinnati's wins. I mean, Panthers, Browns, Giants, I think, and the Raiders. Oof, are there yeah. other four win? I mean, none yeah. of those teams that's not good are good, right? And so I it it yeah, I'm I'm concerned here. I you know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm gonna call blowout per se, but and I'm not, I, and I'm not claiming to know more than the market, but I can definitely see a Chargers win here. I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised at the market movement. Yeah, but I mean and the Chargers beaten. Yeah, I was just that was gonna be my point exactly. Oh, they beat okay. the Browns, the Saints, the Broncos, Broncos, the Panthers, and the Raiders. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of similar teams. Yeah. yeah. Well, but hold on, hold on. 
they've beat yeah they beat the Raiders and again I'm not, I'm not trying to use the transitive property here right but you know they beat the Raiders that they they beat the early season Raiders and they still have hope <laughs> whereas uh, uh, the Bengals lost to a post Devante uh, you know post trade Raiders etc sure, sure. Uh, and then they also but beat... divisional opponent so I mean I would actually say it's a little bit harder for the Chargers to beat the Raiders yeah. Oh, so, so that, that's more credit to the Chargers, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, divisional game. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then the Titans, they beat the Titans too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, that, that that's fair. We'll, we'll find out. I just don't know if it's, but is Cincy really that much better than any of those teams we just listed? Every, yeah. On a quarterback, yeah. He's better at every every one of those quarterbacks. Probably but combined. It's a team better, though. <laughs> You know, Joe Burrow clears the need a fucking team, dude. He's like, he's like single handedly keeping them in the game. It's crazy. All right, fair it's enough. crazy. And if it's, it, I think T. Higgins is, is questionable here. I think if you get him back, you could see a bump. Mm. I, I don't, I don't, I see a world where since he can definitely win this game by a touchdown, yeah. I, I could see a world where all of a sudden this puts this puts the Chargers in pole position on the map of like, oh wow, the Chargers are really good. I, I'm not convinced necessarily. Uh, that that first half, I don't know if you got to watch it. I mean, it was scary what they were allowing Will Levis to do. Sure, Will that Levis is, is very disturbingly bad. <laughs> so, I mean, Joe Burrow is not going to do that. Uh, and he has way better wide receivers. Right. So, yeah, uh, I would fair. I would use I would use some caution if you're you're going all yeah. season on me. Fair, fair, fair enough. All right. Well, speaking of disturbingly bad, this next one, uh, God bless. It has to be a Monday night game, but we so we got to talk about it. Okay. Texans going up against the Cowboys. The Cowboys are disturbingly bad, um, or at least they're about to be. But yeah, I don't know. If, are they going to start Cooper Rush? Are they going to start Trey Lance? I don't know if that's a question mark. I've heard I've heard kind of rumblings about what's actually going to happen there. I thought McCarthy came out and said they're starting. They're starting Cooper Rush. Is okay. What I, yeah. My last May, Okay, I didn't hear that specifically. I would just kind of listen to the rumor mills and stuff. But yeah, maybe maybe you're right. So, which damn, feel bad for Trey Lance. He must really suck. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this one this one's gonna be this one's gonna be uh, not a fun game really to watch. It's gonna be a struggle offensively for Dallas most likely. Um, and Texans, yeah, I mean you know they they're obviously still down a couple key pieces, but there's really no reason why they shouldn't cover the seven am i crazy yeah it's the nfl like seven ages it ain't just like you can't just roll up and get a seven this is I, I, this houston team has some issues I, I mean we were on them last week and that okay. that was a tale of two halves mm -hmm. do you i mean what, what can that can that second half team beat dallas by a touchdown uh I, yeah, I, I, sure. I, I just this is this, there's something wrong with this Texans team. I don't know what it is. Like this team is just like they just crumble, and and this is like the opposite of what they did last year. I don't know if this is regression for CJ Stroud. He doesn't seem like he's actually playing all that poorly, but it just seems like we're getting when everything seemed to go their way last year, we're not seeing yeah. that go their way this year. Now, I'm not saying Dallas is some world beater here, yeah. but. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I, I will. I will concede there. You're right. The, so offensively speaking, the Texans have definitely they're, they're like middle of the pack at best. And, yeah. you know, being down those weapons like does not help help the situation at all. But I, I don't know. I don't know where they tracked or where they were measured last year defensively. But this this is now, I think, where I where my thought process was. I just articulated well, like th this is this. The Texans are a good defensive team. Yeah. Top 10. Yeah, top ten, pretty pretty comfortably as well. Particularly, um, um, oops, particularly in overall success rate and EP per play allowed. So, what a good a top ten defense versus a backup quarterback feels like seven. But rush is him. Rush is him. Really, rush is covered, man. If you look, I mean, he didn't cover last week, but <laughs> damn straight he didn't. Recently, but yeah, I don't know. I I am with you. I, I this is just an uck look. Like I don't want to watch oh, this. I don't even want to think about it. Even just looking at these numbers is like painful. I, I did, in our database though, this is disturbing. Rush is the twenty fifth overall best quarterback. CJ Stroud EPA in the last ten games seventeenth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I don't mean to be hyperbolic here, but yeah, this Houston ugly. team. I mean, we saw them not be able to cover against Chicago as that season keeps going on. Is that mm -hmm. seems more disturbing? We saw them fumble it and turn it over multiple times against the Colts. 
as that season progresses, the Colts seem they're re- regressing. Yep. So I, I just kind of as we reflect back, like who is this Houston team? And Dallas just has so much talent. It's hard to believe that you're just going to see a, you know, a, a like a a downslide, a continued downslide. But it, it is Dallas. It's kind of it's kind of a new kind of cool story for them. Like we've never really seen this where they just suck. There's no there's no circle of life. They just suck. Yeah. No. Yeah. I I I, I cannot disagree more. This this Dallas team is this is the dumpster fire. This is the prototypical dumpster fire. I mean, you've got. CD Lamb can't, can't catch the ball in the end zone because the sunlight's coming in, which re, reignites the whole conversation that they had weeks ago uh, about the whole uh, the stadium with the sunlight and how they didn't take the factor that in. You have Dak on the sideline allegedly mouthing, we fucking suck. You have um, the Cooper. You guys see that on a – it was a game he got hurt in. Um, we got Cooper Rush coming in and this offense – really not being able to do much. And I, and Seth, I will agree with you. I mean, Cooper Rush is not trash. I mean, we saw him play throughout, you know, sporadically here and there. I'm not saying he's, you know, a terrible, terrible quarterback, but this offense had problems yeah. with Dak Prescott at the helm. And Cooper's not putting up those same kind of numbers. And then defensively, yeah, you got Micah Parsons back. But at this point, I mean, what are we doing here? I think mean, this team, I think for me, at least, uh, and this is purely emotional, this is beyond this is beyond numbers at this point. I mean, this is an organizational failure. You, you have to worry about losing the locker room. Uh, oh, and shit. I don't know how you can factor that in. When you lose by 28 to your hated yeah. divisional rival, I, th- and, and, and quite frankly, Philly didn't play a great game, if I'm being honest. I mean, I had a minus seven and a half for off the numbers. They didn't play a, a, a really great game. They didn't take advantage of the Cowboys being the worst rushing team in the NFL. I mean, Saquon, I think he had something like 50 yards. Somebody, it was something unimpressive. They beat them not using Dallas's weakness. So that, to me, is what spells trouble here. And, yeah, Texans aren't great either. We saw two halves, like you mentioned, Seth. But if that defense can show up anywhere in the form of what we had in that first half against the Lions, which the Cowboys aren't, listen, I'm with you. I'm not trying to get hyperbolic here. Seven in the NFL is a lot here. But I have a way better time believing Houston can cover seven given their issues than the Cowboys doing anything remotely positive. This is the third time in four weeks they've been blown out. I just, this is who we get. Okay. Okay. Is this a roar then? Is this like a market? I mean, the market actually is agreeing with you guys' take here. I mean, it's open at seven, it's now sitting at seven and a half. There's, you know, if you really think about what the proposition of buying a seven is, there's really fundamentally no difference between a seven and a seven and a half from covering you're only pushing more you know right. at a slight higher rate um at the seven but professionals sure they're going to quantify that but their their forecasts are clearly this team is going to win by eight nine ten eleven twelve whatever so is this is this is this an opportunity like should we just be like blind not blindly but the analysis sure. here is we're in a time we're in a situation where this Dallas team is like almost unprecedentedly bad. They're they're almost unprecedentedly bad within an organization that isn't used to handling this, and it's clear they're not. They're not used to it. I mean, they're yeah, like it's definitely. clear as hell that you're blinded if you look at that. And the owner's like, "Well, we got to rebuild the whole stadium." Then it's like, <laughs> "No, you can just get some blinds." In fact, you're <laughs> dumb. How do you not have blinds with a button that comes down when you have the ball going that way and goes up when the other team like exactly. I, like, Someone posted a video that they had blinds installed or curtains, or whatever, when like WWE was in the stadium Let's because go. of the sun. But they fucking it's, won't do it for the. I mean, it's clear, dude. He's like, yeah, we. He his comment was like, we know where the sun's gonna be like years in advance. Like, yeah, yeah, that still doesn't mean I can look at it's it. Great. Like, it's great. So is this a roar? Is this a market? Is this like a market opportunity? Yeah, yeah perhaps. I, I mean, I I, I want to see like I want to see one more. I don't want to see one more data point. I if, like if I want to see like how the game starts. I want to see how the first quarter goes, and like I think this is a great potential live spot. Um, particularly if particularly if the Cowboys can maybe move the ball a little bit on the, in the first quarter or in the first drive, even like I, it's not going to last. It's just not going to last. So, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Yeah. No, I was going to say I. But my only, my only, and I, I like what you're saying, Kat. My only problem with that is because, like, you, you never know. Like, if Texas gets the ball or Houston gets yeah. the ball first, and you know, you, you never get the opportunity. So for me, it's one of those things where I, I, I kind of agree, Seth. I mean, this was going to be my off the numbers pick. I felt like it was a little cheating to do like to fade the Cowboys back to back weeks, so I wanted to switch it up. 
but yeah, man, I just, I, for me personally, yeah, I, I, I do agree with you. Yeah. And, and I guess just to give context, a roar, you know, this comes from like the bet, the process and like some, some, uh, consultants, but like a roar is basically a catch all term that like these like very rare opportunities where like the market just is wrong. Like, yes, seven and a half exists, but like the true number is like 15 and it just hasn't caught up yet or the market's yeah. like kind of just there's just no like way to quantify kind of what's going on yeah well come back to me here in like five minutes because i'm gonna i'm gonna Ooh. run some numbers here okay. on using our model to see because rush and rush is a rookie technically in our database and then cj uh, Stroud has a sample that's half rookie half not so I'll, let me run right. the numbers with just what those two quarterbacks give us and let's see what number yeah. we get okay all right, yeah, let's move off this piece of shit game, okay? Because I'm done talking about it. Jeez. All right, let's just zoom out though for a little bit. Let's talk. Let's let's go to the NFL landscape here um, a little bit. Mentioned it for, with a couple of other games here, but uh, yeah, Steve, I I think I I was I'm I'm really surprised. I think Dennis Allen, like in the Saints, like they've they've really I don't know what to make of that team. They they are weird. They started off so incredibly hot. Okay, they were gonna. They were. It was. It was insane how hot they started. Right, they were the ones breaking the charts in some respects on these offensive metrics. Um, but now they've come crashing back down to earth. But then they they've they've won a, a couple of. They lost to the Panthers, but then beat the Falcons. Like, I don't know what to make of that team. Number one, but I want to get your. I want to get your two cents on on your beloved your beloved Bears for two reasons. Number one, we have positions on their under. For underwind total mm-hmm. for eight and a half, which feels feels a lot better than it did even just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but two, I mean, they fired their OC now all of a sudden, and there was apparently calls to bench Williams and start um, Tyson. How do you say his name? Tyson Bajan. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it, uh, is this another team? Do you think that could be in potential free fall mode here? Uh, no, no. I mean, you, you were, you know, we were born in the darkness. You were simply raised in it. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're used to losing, I guess is my point here. I want to go okay. back real quick. Right. I, I will talk about the bears. So I do have something to say about that, but okay. I didn't realize this Dennis Allen. So Dennis Allen got fired from the, from the saints. Uh, he, his, when he got fired, he's got fired twice. Now Derek Carr has been his quarterback both times. He got the fired Raiders. from the Raiders when Derek Carr was there, and he got fired from the Saints when Derek Carr was there. I found that pretty interesting. You mm-hmm. saw that whole Michael Thomas thing on, uh, you know, essentially talking. Oh shit right, about Derek right. Carr. Yeah, and so there may be something more there. But if we could pull up the the landscape again, yeah. So the Bears here. So you mentioned this right now, right? We see kind of where they slide. You know, they're at offensively and defensively. This is a team where they're really good defensively. They just need someone to not throw the game away on offense. And yes, they so they fire Shane Waldron. Um, and they, uh, I've hired Thomas Brown, I think is the new, uh, the new OC that they're, that they're going to do. Here's the problem with that. So two things here, Shane Waldron got fired. Luke Getze got fired as OC from the Raiders Two core, two OCs have been fired this year. They've both been bears, uh, you know, bears, uh, staff members this year or last year. Not great. Okay. So then you say, yeah. okay, is there is there sunshine here? We got Thomas Brown. He's a new guy. Can he get this play call going? Well, not necessarily because where did Thomas Brown come from? Carolina Panthers. So he was there when Frank Reich was there. He called the plays for about three games. Uh, Reich took back the over the uh, the play calling. He got fired. So then mm-hmm. um, Brown took over the play calling for the last six games. And you might ask yourself, okay, well. What did the Panthers do in that last six games of the 2023 season? And I'll tell you, because over they had one game against the Packers where okay. they scored 30 points. They lost, but they scored 30 points. Okay. They lost to the Jaguars 26 to 0. They uh, they beat the, the Falcons 9 to 7. They lost 28 to 6 to the Saints. They lost 21 18 to the Bucks, and they lost 17 10 to the Titans. So there is no hope here. There is no sunshine about Thomas Brown coming in and being the OC. Yeah, the Bears have better players than the Panthers did, no doubt about it. But this guy doesn't really have a lot of experience. And my whole problem here is I I support the firing of the OC. If you're going to do it, do it now. Don't wait to the start of next season and continue to delay Caleb's growth. The problem I have here is if you're going to fire the OC, Take a week or two, try to find a suitable replacement or at least a system that you're going to be able to stick with for another year. Because if Brown doesn't get the job done, Ibrahim yeah. is gone. 
And you get a whole new coaching staff again next year, which is going to delay Caleb's growth again. And the last point I'll make is everyone talks about how great Patrick Mahomes is, how great Jaden Daniels is, this and that. We had a chance to take Patrick Mahomes in that draft. We drafted Mitch Trubisky. And to NFL fans everywhere, you are freaking welcome. Because if the Bears drafted Patrick Mahomes, you wouldn't know who Patrick Mahomes is today. <laughs> or Jaden Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it brings me back to my ultimate okay. point again don't fall for this bs stuff that happens early in the season we told you over and over it is not easy to just say this is a generational quarterback we're just going to draft him and everything's going to be all sunshine rainbows well at least i was saying that I mean, maybe you believe that steve um because you know it's your team but i mean it's very very difficult we're seeing a multiple we, it's the same thing that happened last year the first round pick is the one that's struggling, but then the, the you know the, the, the number one two guy on the line, yeah, yeah. he's mm -hmm. he's flourishing. So it's all about situation. It is not so clear as day, you know, when you're looking forward, and they get this wrong way more than they get this right, and it wasn't a slam dunk. And now all of a sudden, I mean, the eight and a halfs that we have, we have under eight and a half. I mean, they they look okay. Obviously, losing against New England was was hot was great for us, but. Um, Bears did not make the playoffs probably looks fairly good now, especially at plus, or I think it's minus 110. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to, you're better off just fading rookie quarterbacks, like literally blindly. Cause you're going to be right. Like three, you're going to go like three and one, you know, four and one, you know, you, but rookie quarterbacks just don't do well. Yeah. And the la right. last point I'll make on that, you know, going back to last year, I mean, Bryce Young struggling and who's his OC Thomas Brown. Right. So I, I don't, I don't think Brown there's any lessons you. learned. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's gonna be any lessons learned there. So I, I expect more of the same this year for the Bears. So I, I think those unders uh in the missed playoffs have never looked better, even if you know odds wise they're still kind of uh hanging around there. Okay, no, so did you get mad CLV on all those? Yeah. We have plus one forty for under eight and a half and minus one ten. I think it's um it's like minus one seventy for them to miss the playoffs. Oh and okay. Uh, I don't know what the I don't even know if you can get an eight and a half. Sure. I don't know what the current number is. Yeah. Okay. Although you're saying it's minus one ten for the missed playoffs now. I'm like, oh my God, that's no, no, that's no. It's no, insane. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, no. Um All right. Seth, did you get a chance to run yeah, around? Run, run? Okay. Not a roar. <laughs> not, we make not, the okay. uh, number minus five. So it's just, yeah. like right. borderline borderline, we should be betting Dallas. So, so glad yeah, we're not. Not happening. Not happening. <laughs> Okay. All seven right. Seven and a half. Yeah, maybe that's a good number. We'll see. All right. We them boys. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. All right. Let's move on. We got off the numbers here, real quick. Uh, Steve and I will we cap it at the end, but we kind of already duped it out. Uh, we're on opposite sides for off the numbers. I'm on Philly minus three and a half. He's on Commanders plus three and a half. So Seth, wait. Can I just real quick? Oko, please. Uh, I, I want to just talk my shit for ten seconds here. Uh, from last to tie at the first, and the reason I didn't choose any other play, I saw you chose the Eagles, and I thought, what better way to take over Soul Spot of first place than to shit in uh, your face and take the team against you? I wanted, I wanted the smoke. I wanted I love, to look with you in the eyes. I love the, I love the smoke. I love it. Yeah, I'm here for it. So, all right. What is the, your record? You guys are tied. Can we bring yeah. up the record? I don't. I, I don't yeah, let's pull up the card here. And Seth, while while that's up, go ahead and walk walk through yours yeah. real quick. And uh, also, Adam's saying he loves the seven laugh. I'm not sure if that's serious because if you are serious, you can get a seven and a half. And you know, you're getting if you believe that five more. number, then that you're, hook is. Yeah, you're getting some EV. Yeah, I mean. Look, I mean, my only way, I'm not catching up to you guys, but the only way to get out of this hole, and I don't know why I'm dumb. I didn't just do this from the beginning. I just need to just take model plays. Take so dogs. I'm just taking, oh, no, okay. I'm just taking, I'm just taking the things that we're not betting. So the things that are 3%, 2%, this is why I did Pittsburgh last week. Like, this is the only way for me to win. I, I cannot handicap. Now, this also put a little bit of narrative. This is the game that the, the, the Bills win. They win the regular season game. And they lose the playoff game. It's a little less sexy because of all the injuries that the Buffalo has right now. And sure, man, Mahomes just literally seems inevitable. This team, I know, just like, I, you're just at any moment, you're like, oh, they're going to lose. Like, but they just don't. I know. I was, uh, I was debated on playing that one too, Seth, but I was like, I just, I don't know. My mental model, I just can't, can't go against the inevitability of it all. 
Um, yeah, I last week, uh, last week off the numbers two, God pissed me. I was on Niners five and a half, three missed field goals mm. in that one. Ooh, uh, yeah, that one that was just some fluky shit. So yeah, I've I, I started off hot and I've you know small sample size. You know, so I was I was preaching it. I was claiming it. <laughs> you know, it's like don't don't king me. Don't crown me yet. But yeah, definitely uh, definitely come back down. But I think um, I think between the two. I think between the two, yeah, I guess because Seth, you and I are tired in college, and then you're you're down a few in the NFL. So Dude, we got to still... figure out what we're playing for. Oh yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll set that to the agenda for Thursday. And uh, yeah, okay. Chad, if you have any ideas, let us know. Yeah, what, what should, should we, we play for? for? Like tattoo? Do the losers <laughs> have to get a tattoo of the winner? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like one of the maybe like one of those funny I suck at fantasy football punishments like. 24 hours in a McDonald's, some bullshit like that. <laughs> each each Big Mac is an hour off or something. Yeah. Oh, oh well, I'll be there for like 15 minutes. <laughs> Jesus. Sign me up. That's not that's not a that's not a punishment. That's a Tuesday. <laughs> Shut up. So all right. Yeah, off the numbers this week. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And I I, I like that Steve and I are on the opposite side of one, too. So all right, let's move on to the last. Oh, can I add oh. something to that? In running Please those go. numbers, so what I did is I rem- I removed all the rookie categories. So I just basically using all quarterbacks data, it's all there. So there's no filtering. And in and when you run the model that way, it makes the it makes the number plus two Washington. So oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So literally right. exactly what we're saying. If you know you on one side, you know the assumptions we basically use gives it to right. Philly. If you remove those assumptions, it gives it to Washington. Not surprised by that because sure. Jay Daniels has played very well this season. Yeah. yeah, fair, fair enough. So, all right, appreciate you guys. Appreciate the commentary as well. I getting some jabs in here as well. Um, if you guys are in here again, don't forget to like the video, please. If you're not already subscribed to the channel as well, helps us keep this thing rolling and shaking and moving and grooving. But. Actually, One more thing, before, Seth. Go. We, yeah, before we go, that can we actually go back to the Dallas Houston um, card real quick? One thing I forgot to to mention, I wrote down here is, Tex, uh Dallas is a huge uh, run funnel team. So is this the kind of game where you can try to target Mixon a little bit? Now, I'm actually probably more optimistic about that because they were running him last week where he was getting no yard. They were it was third and ten they were running him. So that makes me think that they're that they're probably willing and able to try to target this. Um sure. taking a look at where Houston is. Yeah, Houston is a little bit above average in game plan variance. So it's something to be considering. But Dallas is like the archetype for run funnel, meaning they are really good stopping the pass and they are dog shit stopping the run. Now, Mark Parsons is back from injury, so those are going to alter those numbers a bit. But I wonder if that's a good angle here to be looking at. So make sure you're just kind of taking a look at carries and yards for mixing because those could be a really good value spot for you. Yep. Okay. All right. Good stuff. All right. Let's move on. Last part of the show model picks for. NFL week 11 here. So slightly smaller card than, than last week. I think last week we were 500 again, yep. um, three and three, I believe. So year to date brings the performance of the model 26 and 23 overall. So um, yeah, relatively small, but, but kind of also at the same time, normal size of volume for, for NFL. So Seth, go ahead and just uh, take us through what we got here and we'll break it down. Yeah. So we're on Jets minus three, Green Bay minus six, Detroit minus 12 and a half, and New Orleans minus one and a half. Kind of, uh, I don't know, a lot of gross spots. We've actually seen some market res- support on a number of these. So we'll see how it ends up going. The Lions one feels good and bad all, all the same. I, I definitely learned like the NFL just. It just it just sucks to bet on. Like the, even with a model, you have no idea what's gonna happen. So this isn't, doesn't even matter what you think. It's just like a, it's literally a ride. Just like literally buckle up. Just trust your process that it's either right or. But like trying to sweat it, trying to be like, oh, this one's good, this one's bad. It's just sure. The Saints one feels weird, but it kind of makes sense yeah. because Jameis Winston just is he actually good? Like now they did beat Baltimore. Yeah, which is still like the the couple of losses that Baltimore has, right? It's the Browns and who else? The Vegas. Raiders, right? Yeah, like what? That that's very strange to me. But yeah, to to your point, I mean, I mean, you want to talk about just? I mean, he he is the epitome of 
high risk, high reward, just high variance type of dude. Like he's fun to watch. Like he's the he's the NFL's greatest character. Like I'm glad he exists. Oh, yeah. Basically, and I'm glad I get to enjoy his existence. But yeah, betting on him or and or against him is just, to your point, yeah, one of those one of those roller coaster situations for sure. But the just one, the just one too. Like, yeah, this one. It's just that Joe Flacco sucks. Yeah, we yeah, saw Joe, this last year. Everybody was all, like glazing him, and it's like he's not good. And then like he, I mean, and he just hasn't been good at all. I mean, neither 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 has neither has Rogers though. But I'd rather have Rodgers than Flacco. In name, yeah. No, I, I, I guess. You're right. <laughs> and paydays too. But um, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Man. I don't know. I I don't even. I'm like literally done. Just trying to even like. I know what the model assumptions are. Yeah, we've right. tested those season in, season out. Like basically, that's what's driving the numbers. You quote and and if anything, this is the probably the one of the more uncomfortable ones. But like from a sample size issue, you have a hundred starts home and 100 starts away for each of these quarterbacks i mean you're talking some of the biggest yeah, quarterback sample sizes mm. we have in the database yeah that's a good point fair point so all right we'll see we'll see what happens yeah it feels another one of those weeks where it feels feels weird feels ugly but again the process is the process we ride nonetheless so all right boys Boys and girls, it's been real. Appreciate y'all hanging out in the chat. Again, don't forget to like the video, please. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Helped us out tremendously. We're eternally grateful to you all for, for being here with us, talking shit. So, all right. It's been real, boys and girls. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us. We will be back next week. Until then, good night and good luck.